This conference will oh, no, now I was gonna be say, recorded. It sounds like a stark contrast to um, how the Turtles TV show is. Yeah. Yeah, especially with um, JJ and Kevin, like, being heads of story, too. Like, talking about, like, their experiences on the show versus, like, working in, like, the movie format now. It's much interesting. Yeah, I've always I know the board artists would always try to add it, but mm -hmm. it would always get cut because time. <laughs> There's always still the same thing of like all the like even when we feel like we're meeting like the bare minimum of like what we want to do with scenes, will the editor will cut together all like the animatics and whatnot, and it will, of course will always be over time. And like, where can we find where to cut without like sacrificing like so much? So that's kind of the move right now. So wait, um, so when you guys talk about time, you're talking about like episode time, not time doing the boards uh well there's like for feature right now like both doing, like uh, <laughs> yeah it is kind of both but yeah but it's like, <laughs> be, like x amount of time and then we would still be like somehow like like 15 minutes over uh what we need to do and usually like the easiest place to cut is in action because at least mm -hmm. you can sort of like economize like fight scenes like they just need to get from point A to point B. But where it gets really tricky is when you start to like cut into like like story elements of scenes of like we really don't want to lose these moments with these characters, but we're still like five minutes over on like uh, the movie. So interesting. Yeah, I think where it gets really tricky is where um, like when it's action, but also things are happening in the action that need air. Like they need yeah. air to hit and you're like okay they need to like stand for a second to let the emotion hit but also this is only a 22 minute show so and there's like, that like action scenes where there's different fights happening at the same time too so you're really like a conductor just like with the chicken with the head cut off or just like yeah. i need to make this work somehow and then eventually you somehow get like <laughs> The episode that you want out of it but it was such a clusterfuck getting to that point so i have so much respect for you guys who choreograph fights so like i've done dance sequences and i i thought i knew how to do fights and then i worked with shauna mills and i was like i'm just kidding never mind and so like <laughs> like i have no idea how you guys come up with like and then they go over this and then they leap through a car and then i'm like that's insane to me <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like i like, I can't, I still can't tell you, like, what all, like, the capitals of the 50 states are, but I can recall <laughs> a lot of, like, my favorite, like, action movies, like, fight scenes, like, kung fu films that, like, are kind of just in that back burner, so when there's a moment, I'm like, oh, it actually reminds me of this fight scene that I remember from, like, this old film, then I can sort of draw inspiration from that kind of thing, so, uh, at least just that's how my brain works so <laughs> so awesome yeah i became because like for for a hot second when i was on um magic the gathering um it was like that there were these moments where it's like okay i know what needs to happen in the fight sequence from a story vantage point but yeah. like trying to like make the okay this character is powerful and then this person is kind of in the like less powerful position and then at some point it switches it's like i know these things need to happen so i could like lay that out to the board artist but then i was like but like if you could make it look interesting that'd be cool <laughs> i mean that's you can watch stuff like uh like a lot of the like action choreography and like avatar for example just because like they had to work around a lot of like you know budgetary things but then still make really great fight scenes out of those and like if you can make that work then that's all yeah that's yeah we we ended up watching or referencing the wick the john wick series a lot because uh, the, there was a lot of really believe because for me it's always like if the fight sequence makes it so that there's like one person but somehow they're just like plot armoring their way through things that don't make any sense whereas like yeah. there are moments in the wick series where i'm like oh he maybe dies now and i was like oh just kidding good thing there was that <laughs> bottle on the ground or whatever like <laughs> they just sort of stumble to like the end point where they need to get to so <laughs> yeah it's like watch john wick stumble his way through <laughs> but make it like Sure. <laughs> Danny, on your show, um, you guys, do you guys have a lot of budgetary constraints for Castlevania? We, we, we kind of ignore them. Like, <laughs> um, 
Tell me how your producer just lost a single hair. Like, <laughs> it's really interesting. Like, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm like really quiet just because our experience is so fucking like we're so sequestered off like in Austin, and I my experience is limited just to powerhouse. So it's like when I hear more about the process outside of it, it just seems like there's such a difference in the way it's approached, the way it's the way you guys execute everything that I'm just fucking fascinated. Like it's so different. Um, yeah. We we none of us think about budget at all. <laughs> like probably including the director, we have obviously producers involved and the, we, since we're for uh, we're a four hire studio that those concerns tend to come from whoever's hiring us so we'll do what we want and sometimes a lot of times clients will just be like yeah fuck it let's do that it's cool um <laughs> you and so we just do that our budgets are extremely small though like we're we're I think people would be surprised at how insanely low budget Castlevania is. <laughs> like, it's, it's interesting, like on, on Kipo, we would do a whole episodes where we literally took background paintings from old episodes and tried to like Frankenstein the episode. <laughs> it's like the episodes. of like Seinfeld and Friends that they would just use the same shot of the apartment, just like the filler, yep. whatever they <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's 1,000% <laughs> that, where you're like, this is that one hallway. This is the one hallway, you guys. Make it work. It's the one hallway. Like, <laughs> We did actually have a conversation at one point where someone was finally like, stop making a new shot for every single beat. Like, like <laughs> at some point, we had to be realistic about reuse. It was No one was consciously resisting it, but it was just like, Everyone just felt the need to make a completely new set for every single shot, and it was getting out of hand. Um, that was, a, that was an right? interesting part, <laughs> like when you're show running and you're seeing, like, okay, here's how much of the budget you've used, like on season one, season two, it's like, and then here's how much you have left. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> so you wrap it up. Script and stuff happens. Oh like, my well, God. What can happen? What are we going to do? Is that like Microsoft paperclip? Like, I see you're not using enough of the budget, or like, I see you're already hitting the budget. <laughs> I you were the budget in the first season. Did you see that little slap in the face? <laughs> like, come on. Like you like me your choice? Yeah, yeah, no, I totally feel that. Hey, What's look who it is. Man. Hey. Cool. hey. Chris Copeland. Well, the last one, I hey. swear to God, I was like, can we just have like a sponsored by Chris Copeland? Our career. Yeah. All sponsored by Chris Copeland. Sponsored like, by Chris Copeland? <laughs> you do not want anything sponsored by me. I, I promise you this. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm sorry, man. Oh, oh, thanks, for thanks for joining us. We're yes. Good. Yo, anytime. I feel like I get oh, the benefit okay. of the doubt. I feel like I get the benefit of the doubt. I just go, man, my kids, they ain't have shit to do with it, but I blame my kids and everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have them, just so you have something to yeah. blame. That was it. <laughs> Four scapegoats. Four scapegoats. <laughs> Four scapegoats. Yes. Hey, hey, Danny, you know the <laughs> we've been trying to have for months? Here it is, uh -huh. bro. Yeah, this I know. Is... We finally got to that point. We were waiting for this. <laughs> this nice Danny to be like, I'm putting you in a room. God, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sorry. So sorry. We'll no, this has been so fun. Like, I've, like, I've been getting such great response and feedback from everyone. Like, please, just like make a podcast or something. Just get everyone together and hang out and just shoot the shit and just talk shop. Do you remember if there yeah. are any questions? that we missed from yesterday or if like did anyone I think Chris answered all of them but we had the chat box yeah, yesterday. I remember like oh. both of I would answer you know, every question at scrolling yeah. on the side and I would see Chris like and I texted Chris I was like Chris just get on he's like no 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 I'm good I'm good I'm running intel red, <laughs> red, red secret, red I'm doing secret told me, yeah red secrets taught me the power of just writing things down instead of drawing them or or saying them so i, I believe in that i believe in that power now right yeah <laughs> yeah that's the like trick every, dude. like trying to draw everything yourself is crazy every script i i break down starts with like i do thumbnails and then by the time it gets to like the third page i'm like now it's only gonna be words <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> That and, beauty, and, the and beauty, the beauty, the beauty of process, and, and one of the board artists on our team, uh, who I, well, I guess I could mention his name, Simon Wells. Like he's he's a board artist that like and director and live action, and, but yeah. he worked on like Back to the Future and stuff. But he had a similar process. Like he typed out every single shot. 
See, so Chris and Justin could just read the shot list. Mm -hmm. So he hadn't drawn anything, yeah. but it's like every <laughs> single, and then it's cut to yeah. this type of oh, uh, yeah. stuff. But yeah. I was like, damn, I, I that saves a lot of time. Like, yeah, it does. <laughs> and I can't, I can't do it without doing that. Like, I take so long if I don't. I, I have other parts of the process too. Like, I legit, I, this sounds so fucking nerdy, but like, I'll actually force myself to write, like, what, who's, what character's point of view are we experiencing this through? Uh, fucking who wants what and what's in their way. Like, all of those, like, <laughs> all of those, like, from the book, like, so from some no. screenwriting slash directing book type stuff, I, I force myself to, like, write it because if i don't it's yes. just this nebulous bullshit in my head it's not like an actual thing it's not an actual thing i've crystallized yeah. so like i can't start john, unless john I know truby things. bro yeah john yeah. truby's book is like a big john truby's mckee's like all of those kind of standard yeah. go-to's it's just like yep i don't know i want to like internalize it and make it not just something that i kind of exists nebulously in my mind I mean, you're making, you're you're making my brother Justin's. You're making my brother Justin's nipples smile right now. <laughs> like, that's you know, there's that nothing dude, to that. <laughs> we'll be sitting in a meeting. We'll be sitting in a meeting, and Rad and I will, you know, we'll go and we'll like, and you'll just see Justin just in his old man, like, you know, <laughs> you know, because he's he's locked in on some question that he feels like we need to answer, and he just won't even mentally move until we go like, okay, you know. What's the, and he'll go like, man, he's, uh, where's the wall for this character? He's over here and you guys are talking about this stuff and right and I'll be like, damn it, we were getting to the fun thing. You know, it's like you were, <laughs> anytime you think about, I mean, and that's the, it's the, that's the fun of it, right? Like it's sort of red and they had to convince me to put the, the letters down because I'm, my ADHD is just like write words. Haven't we evolved past <laughs> this? Like we're, we're you guys are still talking butterscotch. You know, we, how like how many of us have ADHD? Because I know me and Chris both have it. I just got diagnosed. Like I, I had it my whole life, and suddenly finding out made a whole childhood really yeah. like click into place in a yeah. weird way. Yeah. Because um, like I'm, uh -huh. my parents are Ethiopian, so like that's just not some shit. Ethiopian parents yeah. are really gonna like. Yeah, it's just not a thing. parents it, don't really talk about like mental things. Yeah. No. No, really? Yeah. I don't care what's going on in your mind. What is that? No. That's right. a weird in your That's mind. <laughs> it's interesting when you board a scene, there's something about the speed it takes you to draw. It puts you in this weird mental state where time mm -hmm. like slows down. And it's the only time I can know what's happening around me, like yeah. while I'm boarding, because yeah. it's going so slow. But, and Chris, I'm sure you're learning this too. When you type, when you write something, you mm -hmm. go so fast that. Sometimes you put yeah. 30 ideas down that don't go together, but there's it's something about slowing down to draw that feeds all that out, which is nice. Yeah, I think it's yeah, because it's like switching back. It's so funny. I'm like, I'm on like the last two pages of a script that uh, for freelancing that's due tomorrow, and I'm like, so close. But like, <laughs> writing is a lot like a fast skill. Like, it you can physically perform the yeah. task faster, whereas like with drawing it's the physical labor takes longer. Whereas with writing, you spend a lot more time thinking, like I can draw and have mm -hmm. TV going and have music going. When I'm writing, it is dead silence. Like I, yeah. I can't do anything else but think because it's like it's any crazy. other distraction and it will like just mm -hmm. bleed into the words. I find it more drawing than writing. It's like, it's so, it's interesting to hear like kind of like the opposite. Cause it's faster for me to like, Sort of, I already like am seeing the visual as I'm reading the script, so I like to just get it out as soon as I can. But mm -hmm. I guess like there's maybe only like rare times when it's like a very layered scene or like moments happening where maybe I just like it is easier for me to like write it down. But that's less mm -hmm. often than like everything else I've usually done before. So I kill for that. Mm -hmm. I want that so bad. I won't see anything <laughs> at all until I write. Like until I really? write, the process of typing is what gets images going. That's why I like even rewriting the same fucking script. I have to do it, otherwise it's just like, and also part of it with the ADHD thing is like, I can convince myself to start because I can say, this is an easy task, or not easy, but this is a, this is yeah. a short task. It's not yeah. like overwhelming. Yeah. It's not sort of encompassing. You're like so tricking your brain essentially? To, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. that point? yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause I get with drawing, I get uh, analysis paralysis way more than I do with writing. Mm -hmm. Like with writing, um, and Justin, it's funny when I, when I would write something for, you know, 
our, our, our movies, like just putting down a little something. And Justin's like, dude, you write exactly how you talk. And, 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 and the reason that I do that is because if I don't, I'm going to get caught in that analysis paralysis with writing where I'm just going like, oh, do I say this? I'm like, no, I'm just going to say the stupid ass thing. And then, you know, you'll read it and, and get it with drawing because I see the, the, the thing. I'm like, well, I'm, it's just going to take forever for me to, because I'm going to do it nine times and I'm going to throw it away and I'm going to redo it until it gets every little piece. Now it's such a crazy ass thing, but I, I didn't learn I had ADHD since I was 35. I just thought I was a failure. The whole I was like, damn. Well, I guess. Wow, Chris. I, I, it's that. It's the. It's that. Like you know, we were all fine until someone told us we had amazing potential. Yeah. Right. We were yeah, all. Or it's like and then we were all us, kind of making it work. Like I feel like. Yeah. Was There's a lot of and things. And then you were told you had potential. You yeah. were done. You're just like, well, I'm never gonna reach that. Like I'm just not gonna do it. And so it wasn't until I was like 35 that I was like that I found out you know, that I had ADHD and I was just like, oh, that's why I like drawing in class and I was still doing well on my on my work is because that was my my fidget. You know what I mean? That was my mental coping mechanism. So it's a crazy thing, man. But we all got it to some extent, I think. Yeah, I feel like with certain ones like with anxiety, for example, like they're they're ones that like kind of reward you a little bit because you're like, I care so much, I care so much. And so like <laughs> it it becomes like a a sort of beneficial thing until it reaches critical mass and then it just tips off into making things so much worse. And so it, it's yeah. like, you, you, you're you like, no, no, I'm just really conscientious. You're like, oh no, there's something else. There's something <laughs> else going on. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Before we go on, man, let me say, I'm sorry, man. I, I like jumped my animal ass right in here. Casey and, and Latoya, honored and, and Danny, so honored to meet all three of you guys digitally, but Super honored to meet you guys, like fans of all your work, and and um, like it, it's it's a crazy way to meet people, but of course I love seeing the the, the guys I, I know here, Andy, Allison, Red, and and Ife. Uh, but I'm like it's my first time actually interacting with you guys, so super honored. And and um, Andy, thank you for wanting me to jump into your convo um, and dictate it with my loud ass mouth. We tried to get Danny on Kiko back in the day, but you were you were. Seems <laughs> like one though. <laughs> we tried to get Danny on Kipo? Was it before when I was in the hospital? It might have been, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, remember that whole thing? I don't I don't that little thing. That's a bad memory for y'all. I don't remember shit. But uh, <laughs> they're all like deeply traumatized by that experience that you were like, <laughs> there was like it was like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm so happy you made it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh what happened? <laughs> Who are you? No. <laughs> I seriously that I I, like I was awake, I was awake a lot of the time. My my brothers like they they still are laughing at some of the things because they're like, "Yo, you would talk like you were, you remembered everything, you were totally fine." And then the next day, someone would come visit in the hospital, and it was like you just woke up again. I'm like, "Yeah, I don't remember any of it, man. I remember none of those interactions at all, which was just phenomenal." Wow. Yeah, wild. That accident happened to you guys, not me. But thank you. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Chris crashed his bike and you were unconscious yes. for like a week? For a week? It was was that 2017? It was it was October 2017? Yeah, September. Because I remember yeah. it was near my brother's birthday. And yeah. uh I was talking to like Matt because it was during Young Justice that we were on. Mm -hmm. And it was like Matt was gonna like leave something silly at your desk, and I was like, "Oh, that's stupid." I'm like, "Whatever." And then like you weren't coming in yet, and then he was like, "God, he's really late, huh?" Because like you would ride your bike, uh, mm -hmm. to the train, take the train uh, to Burbank, and then ride your bike from there to the office. And yep. then that's when uh, our producer like got us all together, and told us what happened. We were like, "What the fuck?" Like, <laughs> it was bananas. It was all bananas. I think my my. Yeah, my house is on a, you know, I'm I'm in a uh, new hall, so it's like it's just hills everywhere, and there's one hill that from my house down to the to like this main main road, and it's it's like from my house to that main road, it's probably like half a mile, but it is all steep downhill, and in fact, there's like because it, it goes by my kid's school, and so there's like one of those uh, speed readers that are up and i would go by that thing and i've been riding i've been doing bmx my whole life so like riding bikes i'm not you know 
But like that speed reader would always read 30, 31 miles an hour, just down, no pedaling, just going, just steep. And one day, just, you know, uh, storyboard hustle. Um, I think my daughter took my helmet and threw it behind my washer or something like that. And I couldn't find it at that point, but this was my helmet for that day. And my front, my front wheel on my bike is a uh, quick release. And the day before that, uh, you know, my, every now and again, my wife and, and the kids would come pick me up in the train station and I would take the front wheel off, put the bike in. And I think when I went to put the wheel on, I didn't tighten it. And so I'm going down that 31 mile an hour hill, no helmet. And uh, there's a turn, steep turn. I went over the handlebars and just knocked my head. And when I did that, it was like blackout immediately. And uh, they had to do the, the brain. So that's how I got my hair cut. You know I'm saying, I was just like, all right, God, if you wanted me to go to a damn barber shop, you know what I'm saying? Like, just tell me. Like that, that's yeah. a weird ass way to. That's a weird you went out of your way just for a haircut. Uh, I was like, that was a weird, that was a weird haircut. But apparently, like when I when I fell, like, it was early in the morning, it was like seven a.m. But there was a lady at a at a gas station, and she saw it and immediately called the ambulance. I have no idea who that lady is. I've never met her, but uh, I'm, I'm thankful for her. But it was crazy. It was bananas. And then I woke up. And everyone was like, yo, what happened? I was like, yo, I don't know. You tell me. Like, I, I don't know. Uh, it beats me. But uh, it was, that was definitely a life change. And after that, I took like a, like a, probably two months off. And then uh, that's when I started at, uh, on Kipo, directing on Kipo after the, the biking accident. I, like, well, I don't remember anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what? You're ambitious. Let's go do something we've never done before. Yeah. That was that. That was that. So, but I'm good now. I think mm -hmm. I'm good. Sparks yeah. <laughs> fly every so often, but every now and again, I can black out. Every now and again, that's all. That's all. Uh, Ethan, what board are you working on, bro? Checking on her right uh, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, trying to make the headline. I'll just let them, uh, let them talk. It's so um, we're in a supposed to done in um next yeah on tuesday or monday yeah so i'm trying to clean up uh, my last events for it's actually for cheese so, yeah. for chase yes yeah, he's actually on, on the stuff my internet went up mm -hmm. yeah just, but, just um, talking you about your your, your your bike accident I, I remember when i saw it it was really scary because um and then I, for some reason I was like, "Yo, if something happens to this dude, it's it's going to be very bad." I don't know how I would feel. I've never met you before, so. Oh man, yeah. we're glad you're good. Me too, me too. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I was having fun before it all. It was just a a reminder of how fragile things can be. That was all. That was it. We need those every now and again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and now we draw. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I love it. Um, so Andy, did you did you did you have like uh other questions or something? Or we just gonna do we just chat. Let's just chit chat. Like what do you how you want to do? Chatting. I mean there's always one question because we've got just amazing amazing action people here. People are always like, What how do you guys board action? Like what is your philosophy yes, on that? Yes, please tell. Um, yeah, <laughs> I just draw out. Like out and I just draw. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna and then I don't look at it until the next day, and then I look at what I did. So yeah. Uh, man, you know what's funny, dude? Like it's so crazy. Since working with Rad on Kipo, I've been unlearning a lot of stuff to find this weird middle, right? And so my perspective has has, has shifted a lot because um, there's just a there's a level of like. And and you guys spoke about this in, in the last one, right? Like TV, the production pipeline for TV is arduous, man. Like you and, and it's it's like it's you're just sprinting constantly, sprinting, 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 and going, 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 like put the thing down, put the thing down, put it down. And because the stakes are high, right? Like if you don't put an idea down the way that you see it in your mind, it, it, there's room for dictation, there's room for it to go in a different direction. And 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 that's that along with my ADHD and my like 11th hour of the addiction of, of thinking and going like, I got it, let's go. Like I, my TV years were, were crazy. And I, it was cause I've worked on all action stuff. And I'm like, if the layout of these shots is not, if it's not adhering to what 
gives us a good return on animation. It's gonna be jacked. Like if if the if the the misread of the design is not there, if anything gets in the way of my imagination, I'm gonna be pissed, right? And so for me, that was a lot of what dictated my psychosis with action stuff. And the first week I started in animation, 2009, July 2009, the first action board that I saw, it was Joaquin Dos Santos and Keon Ryu's <laughs> boards that they had done for the Green Lantern animated short. And I'm sitting there watching it. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> Just start with the bar in the air. Just, yeah, I was like, I can't do that, man. Like, I'm not gonna. I literally was looking at, it and then later that day to turn this. Stuff. So, so growing up in Chicago, I'm a Michael Jordan fan. You see a Michael Jordan, and you go like, well, there's my standard. Like, I'm gonna fail this one hard, and that that just became my drive constantly. And 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 more specifically, Ryu, because it was just like animation that dude understands animation because he was an animator and he knows like no you you don't need all the details this shorthand will get you all the information you need and so those are some of the philosophical things that sort of for my for my action boarding like practically i'm literally just going like what the hell is this action sequence about you know what i mean like what characters are in it on kipo there were so many dope action things because the characters were interesting and their stories were interesting. So if you take an interesting character mixed with another interesting character in an okay landscape, but their drive and the stakes are high, if you can define those stakes, then you can start to refine some of the things that are happening in it. And that's just sort of always my philosophy, which is like, who are these characters? And what is this action scene? Is this an act A action sequence? Is it an act C? You know what I mean? Like, where are we at in our story? How big or small does it need to be? Those little, like my little building Lego blocks. And by the time I answer some of those questions, I usually have something that like feels good or, or fun, so. I love, uh, like, Alan, to that, like implementing like those personality aspects about a certain character. And then that can influence the way that they fight with one another because you wouldn't be able to choreograph every fight the same way just because it's like oh like they could use their size to their advantage they could use speed to their advantage like mm -hmm. even what they have on them the weapons they use like that can influence like the yeah. type of style of uh fighting because there'll be certain weapons like uh like you know working on turtles right now they all have like their own specific way of like graph being like really brutish and like using the size and Mikey's a bit more bouncy and like him using like the chains and whatnot. Like I mm -hmm. love like, that kind of aspects because then depending on those things, you can get really dynamic shots out of something like that and really make mm -hmm. it a fun fight to watch. Then you feel like it's these characters fighting as opposed to just like a fight scene that happened to like be the characters, you know? Like yeah. you know, yeah. those kind of yeah. differences. Yeah, I feel it's like trying to make it so that it doesn't feel generic. And I mean, I feel like this is across the board, whether it's an action scene or a comedy scene, like everything should feel unique to the character. And so if a character is a very timid person, but they are in a fight sequence, that personality will seep into their behavior during the fight. And so like mm -hmm. when you're choreographing, you're like, still trying to lean into like oh this person's very arrogant so this is the way they hold and this is kind of how they posture or like oh mm -hmm. this person's just like get it done and like so it changes the way they move and it changes sort of the decision making process so it shouldn't feel like you could just swap out each character for each person in the fight because like the the way they move and the choices that they're making are specific to that individual that's like yeah. good a uh, fight to reference for that especially is uh the zuko azula fight like their final fight with one another when it's like you see her like getting to the brink of like her sanity and then losing it like you're one like those are things that you're going to see in the way that she fights versus when she was a lot more collected and calm before so that just can also be a really great way to show like a character arc like throughout like a series like that too so i love seeing that kind of like development of like in the fights and whatnot so yeah there were two yeah. things i learned um from when I got to Powerhouse, it was like Spencer and Spencer Wan and Sam Dietz, which were like what Chris was talking about with like the first boards being Kihyun Ryu's. <laughs> it was the same deal where it was like, I can't fucking. Bar in space. 
Yeah, like it's unfair. <laughs> but the two things I learned from them, um, one was Spencer, he told me this directly, which was uh, regarding fights specifically, pay attention to the footwork. Um, mm -hmm. He said getting the footwork down will get, I mean, it'll get you like pretty far to there mm -hmm. as far as moving characters in space, how they're shifting their weight and what they're doing and interacting. Just pay attention to the footwork. Um, when that's taken me like a surprisingly far distance. Um, mm -hmm. And the second thing, which I really don't know how to articulate, and it's very, it's definitely more technical. I think what you all were talking about is more important. Um, but this is sort of like a nitty gritty thing, which is like, I don't know how to fucking, it is just this concept of like, character A makes an attempt, character B evades the attempt or blocks the attempt or whatever. I'm just like the physics of it. Or... No, it's more like or maybe the motivation. Pace. It's it's motivation. it's like character A makes an attempt, B stops it, and then character A makes the earlier attempt work for them to try something new, and then that oh, becoming a that dance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so like either as a result of the character adapting or just trying something new that they deliberately set up, that I know it sounds weirdly hyper specific, but it's also been like a huge thing for making a fight interesting. Just watching mm -hmm. the build up. It makes you like the sort of the stranger. Like when you really watch like yeah. the breakdowns of those fights, like it's that really is like a dance choreography that's just so good to watch. It, and it's the beauty of like when you when you really understand, like at the end of the day, if I took based on what we've set up in this movie, based on where these characters are going, based on where they're trying to get to, like where they're coming from, if I took these two characters, at the end of the day. And David Fincher said it best, right? Like, and I'm gonna quote him nine million times because I do that. <laughs> Allison, you know this. Don't even laugh. Uh, <laughs> but like, it's this idea of like great scenes of <laughs> people sitting in a room at a table, right? Like, at the end of the day, you can take take the action out of it and go like, if I had these guys to say what they are feeling and what they're thinking, what they've learned, and where they're going to each other, if I had them do that, this story we could we could wrap it up and go like, all right, that's it, it'd be boring, right? But we get to the emotional core of it, right? And so every, you, you think of that as the basis and going like, all right, here they are. I hate you, you killed my mom, uh, I'm gonna kill you, okay, fine. Like, okay, boom. Everything from there is just finessing that point, right? Like everything from there is just icing on that point. And so like the there is at the end of that sentence. Yeah. Actually. All you're doing is going when this dude goes to punch this dude in the face, he's not doing it like this. He's doing it and there's tears in his eyes because that guy killed his mom, right? Like uh the guy who's going to block and he puts his hands down, he's doing that because he knows that he killed his mom and he feels guilt for that, right? Like so it's those little tidbits that oftentimes I've seen a bunch of action where you're just sort of like it's just the thing you're like god damn man like 20 minutes of just not like I don't even know these are just mannequins doing the thing and so it's like getting to that car I remember the first time I saw uh Jet Li's Fist of Legend right it's the remake of the the Bruce Lee movie I think um and there's just this fight that he has with this dude like there's a fight where you can tell that he's in one place and then like start, he arrives at a different place throughout that fight. And when he arrives at that different place, he changes his entire posture. And you're like, yo. And then that fight becomes a completely different fight all of a sudden. And now you're rooting for him as opposed to watching all of the crazy details. And so that stuff like that just going like man if it's a chase sequence if it's a you know a fight if it's a conversation right like what are they trying to say to each other you know what i mean the, the those assessments i feel like when you get rid of those because you're doing an action sequence and you're thinking about the facade like the 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 finessing first you're missing the whole you're missing that transcendent thing that's going to make that scene memorable and i, I feel like you stop there to find that and, and you finesse um because some people just go too far where it's like i don't even care uh, so that's that's sort of my, my thing like I you shouldn't like be able to take it out oh sorry right go ahead <laughs> well, I said the, the, another thing i noticed is the stop and start like People have done who've done action scenes for a long, long time. You never stop. Everything rolls mm -hmm. into the next. You just you never mm -hmm. stop for a line. You never stop for a beat. 
If they mm -hmm. fall to the okay. ground yep. as they're getting up, they're doing <laughs> they're rolling, they're staying alive, moving, like mm -hmm. you just never stop. But then like yeah. people who are new to boarding, they constantly stop and then start again and stop mm -hmm. and start again. Huh. That's something yeah. to learn how to roll everything into yep. one thing and then get it over with quick. Like, nah. <laughs> like I don't want to sit there and watch. Like whatever the emotional payoff, if it's paying off, get out of that scene. Like oh my God. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like uh, making sure that I'll like, I don't know if you guys do the same thing, but when I uh, board out my action stuff, I'm also timing it at the same time too. So then when I do go all the way back and I play through, I kind of, the way that I like will watch those scenes are to make sure that I can feel if it's on it for too long. Or like mm -hmm. this is a moment where I think the audience needs to breathe and we need to like reestablish what's going mm -hmm. on or like uh, is this the moment to break away to see when something else is happening? Like uh, I guess I wonder if like you guys kind of like time out your work at the same time too when you're doing your shoot stuff or because like that's the way I have to do it. So I'm like I can sort of see it as like a bigger picture kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Push, push in the play button. Push in the play button. Through, but I don't. I, I'm using Photoshop, so I, I constantly just go back and click through. I don't know how you over, do it. Over, over. I was about to say why, and I'm like, I shouldn't say that out loud. But no, 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 you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, listen. <laughs> don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't start asking Rad about why he uses Photoshop and why he. Hey, I can say, like, I'll tell you guys why. It's because if you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> most, at most, <laughs> you know. Like three versions of notes, and you ship it overseas. But like, we're doing hundreds of versions of the same scene with multiple people all working on hundreds of versions. If you try to track all those storyboard profiles, you'd have to be like, "Hey, you send me the last storyboard profile you worked on today. Let me open it up, and then I'm gonna draw it and save it, and make sure this other person gets it tomorrow." Like, it would be a nightmare to track Isn't everything. Isn't the same thing with like Photoshop? <laughs> No, no, we have a program that stores everything and it's all edited. So like you can hit play and watch it and be changing out boards for the whole movie. We like because we use flicks. Tomb boom. You know, hundreds of versions all at once. Uh -huh. of the movie, but it's all stored in one location. So it's like one big storyboard profile in a way. And it sounds like a really nice chaos to me, just like when I hear that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, did, yeah, I'm sure. did, like, did you guys all sense? stop boarding with Toon Boom? You said what? Huh? Did, did you all stop boarding with like Toon Boom? You just like all started using Toon Boom to board? All no. of you? I've been I, in I, Photoshop I, for I, a I, hot I, minute. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because yeah. that, that, I used Photoshop, so I was, uh, it was surprising. Oh, my God. My yes. first two years oh, was in, in I started Photoshop. With Boom. Yeah, my yeah. first two years was in Photoshop, and and it was yeah. it was Joaquin had to like poke fun at me for a long time. Like he would, <laughs> it wasn't poke, he would he would go on my okay. Deviant Art, he would go on my Deviant Art page when I was in starting off in anime. And he would just go like Tomb Boom, bro, like all, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, like okay. And, <laughs> uh, storyboard Pro, because I felt like it was at least newish to me when. I got started at Warner Brothers for the first time because then they were already using it and then that was how I had to use it for the first time because I was like I don't know how they could have done it before this like once I saw like how easy yeah. it was to do certain things and I was always somebody that liked to like time everything out too so it's I was like, really hard oh, to go back <laughs> so much easier. yeah it's, like I, I did it in Photoshop for like maybe a uh, half a year and then once I got like my oh, actual man. studio job it was like Harmony is or not Harmony um Toon Boom is the thing so we pros what we're doing, and I'm like, oh, good, never again, cool. Like, <laughs> I'll tell you this, man. You know, you know what happened with it. Like, Toon Boom was built as an evolution to the process with Photoshop. But what happened was is that as we started using Toon Boom more, we started throwing out a lot of these Photoshop methodologies. We started just going like, I don't. Why would I do that when blah blah blah? Because what happened, and it, it wasn't an artistic thing, or it wasn't even a program thing. It was the production yeah. pipeline. What happened was is that the production pipeline began to be start to get structured around working in Tomb Boom. So, for instance, when we were on Kipo, I would do a you know a board or whatever, like put some notes on a board, and I would send it right to the editor. And 
the production team was nowhere around, right? And I would send it to the editor and she'd get it and she'd go, okay, cool. You know, she'd start pulling, blah, blah, blah. She'd put it in. We watch an animatic later. And I'm like, no, wait, go back. Where the hell are the boards that I did for this part? And she's like, oh no, uh, this person over here brought me this board at four o'clock. I'm like, yeah, but I, I brought you the other one at two o'clock. Why is, why is my, the director, I wanna see my thing in here. Why is that not in there? That was the problem. Toon Boom was brought in and then the production line started to work with it and go like, hey man, at Warner Brothers, Matt Mahoney would come by and go like, drop your file into Matt Mahoney production guy. Uh, drop your file into this folder. That's the God folder. You don't touch it. After you drop it in there, don't touch it. You go in that folder and touch it, I'm gonna oh, touch it, right? Yeah. <laughs> don't touch it. You, you leave it alone. You do a file on your desktop. And then later on, after the <laughs> editing team has done all the implementing, that, because they it was that one God file is what we would call it. So what would happen is, is that if you don't have that middleman because of the way that the production line was built after that, you just everyone's just going willy nilly with it. What I found on our movie is like, I just, every drawing you guys see of mine on, on Instagram, it's all in Toon Boom, every single one of them. I don't like, if it's not procreate color and something, I'm drawing in Toon Boom. What I had to go yeah. like, man, I'm not gonna go and reset. I'm 38 years old, I ain't learning how to draw again in the Photoshop, what was that old stuff? But, <laughs> but going, okay, how do I get my drawings done, A, and do it in a way, B, that feels like Rad's process in Photoshop, right? Like cutting out all the animated layers and removing the big camera move, right? Working with it in that way. And, and I'm gonna tell you, man, like the marriage of uh, Toon Boom's execution with Photoshop's sort of method is unbelievable because you can do it, export them all out, get them to your editor. And, and, and that pipe, that Flix pipeline is so dope because it's like, your editor is showing you something, you open it up, open that one image up, go right in and put it right on there. It's it's so quick because you're just like, get your, get the good ideas on. So is Flix compatible with Toon Boom, Chris? Are you using Toon Boom? With? I'm using well, you Toon can Boom. export um, like your storyboard profiles. I'm sure this is interesting mm -hmm. to everybody, but you can export them so that can be... <laughs> Sorry, Chad. No, no. Talk can... about AAFs and XMLs. Go, go, yeah. Allison. Yeah. Yeah. You can export your <laughs> So that uh, they could be PSD files because, or and JPEGs if you wanted it to be also, yeah. because uh, the one time that I worked in live action was for Disney Feature, and they were still using Photoshop. And my first day starting there, already my first time working in live action, I was terrified. So then the first day when they're like, okay, so like you're using Photoshop, yeah, I'm like. everything they do in storyboard uh pro into photoshop so that they could still so i could still work on the job essentially and thankfully mm -hmm. that was the case so like i didn't have to work slower than i normally would except when i did have to like uh export everything so like yeah. i'm really glad that toon boom had that option at all otherwise like i would have been there my first day and then just like walked up and left right. I was like, yeah Yo, and, and Toon Boom, Toon Boom, that's the thing too, man. This is this is another thing that with TV studios is like I, one of the things that I'm really um, agitated by is the connect or, or, or lack thereof um, with production to production overseas. Because when we board stuff out uh, in Toon Boom for the overseas studios and, uh, you know, like I on the last show that Justin and I were, were supervising and show running on, the board artists were turning these boards with all these animated layers and all this stuff. And I'm like, son, when you send this overseas to Korea and they have to export these JPEGs, Toon Boom is not tracking all that data. So they're gonna get these exports with these jumpy shots and they don't know what the hell is going on. And then you know what happens? Garbage ass animation comes back. Yeah. You have to understand the pipeline because <laughs> oh we do it all this stuff. Print them on like, paper and send it to the animator. They print them on paper. Yeah. <laughs> they print them on paper. They don't so, even have to. Actually, there. Sungjin, no. at Tim House, the project I'm on, Sungjin's very like self-aware about that process. So yes. at least for the board artists, we don't necessarily have to cons like concern ourselves with that because the revisionists, I, we sat in on a meeting just to kind of like, get an idea of what mm -hmm. then you know and this is i think such having a really great like broad picture of things and making sure all of us kind of have an idea of what 
our uh, what the things we're working on and how it's moving on to the next people. And like something he just said to me recently when I had a conversation with him that really kind of resonates and like sitting in the back of my head now, it's like he wants to create boards that are worth their time to animate because they're so fucking That's talented it. at animation. So it's like, well, we don't want to give them like crazy unproducible shit. So it's just like, yes. how do we do a service to their job and so that they can feel like they're respected in the sense that like we're not just handing them like oh since you're so talented you can handle this yes. like you can handle Man. it like we don't want to do yeah. that to them yeah. so, um so this is on a uh, critical role uh at tip mm -hmm. okay yeah. shout out to Sun Jim, Man. the level of work that you guys have being like a fantasy like D and D show, so like spells, fighting, like I follow the the campaign, and uh, so to hear it being animated, and then thankfully you guys getting another season too. It's like you still have that to think about, so then that way it could still be the quality of like uh, animation that you want it to be. Sustainability. So, I, I got your work. For you, that's right. Yeah. yeah shout out to Sun. i'm so man. fucking That's worried but they really really did a lot to talk to us about like hey they're working on paper so cut out all those crazy camera shakes write it on the fucking notes instead of like doing it or like export it out for the editor or like export it out for the so the editor knows what to do so that like for maybe like I, this is me i'm still really early so i'm still learning about the process so like maybe compositing has an idea of what we want the effect mm -hmm. to be uh but like we're not going to give them crazy files they are like they're saying like everything layouted it's like just one big sheet of paper so like how do we make yeah. sure that they're not yeah. confused by stuff and it's just like oh this is for me it's like super interesting to learn and um i'm even coming from illustration so it's even less animated so some of the stuff that i'm doing I'm like this is so like i don't time my shit out like uh, how you guys are saying timing things out like i can't think that way just yet because i think my brain is still like still working in a way where i'm not thinking about time i'm still like just mm -hmm. thinking about things so it's like timing i'm just like oh that's a that's crazy <laughs> yeah i've, I've yeah. told a couple people man like you know so often everybody's asking you know like a lot of newer talent asking artists like yo what can i do what can i learn to like equip my and i'm like yo what you need to do is figure out a way to talk to a line producer you know what i mean like figure out a way to talk to a production person you know what i mean like talk to a production coordinator because the pipeline a lot of times we're doing 95 levels and layers of work when probably we only needed to do like 30 or 40 right because so many of those layers are just finesse right like you don't need some of the stuff that you're putting down that that was the beauty of when i started at warner brothers is you're working under bruce tim who has the old school mentality as it evolved into the new school and he's just like yo why the hell are you drawing shoestrings like nobody <laughs> animating that shit like what are you oh, wow. doing right like, I mean, it's just like all of those little things in terms of exporting and like your post A and post B. And you're like, it's not all art. A lot of it is just, it's all about economy. It's all about like production pipelines and going like, how do I make sure that when this gets over to Korea, mm -hmm. these guys have been in the studio for 38 hours in a 24 hour day, that they're not dying to try to figure out what the hell this drawing is about. Like that level of thinking, it, it just, it, when you start to really dive into and go like these are people who got to do this stuff it changes your whole process you know what i mean you just gain a better respect for for the humanity mm -hmm. of it all it's so. like you have to put your priorities into like putting the information that will be helpful rather than the information that's like okay that's nice and like especially like mm -hmm. um working on a show that's harmony so like at the end of the day there is a rig like there is a there will be at least a thing that is loosely on model. And so we're just kind of trying to create the guidelines so they can put the rigs in. So sometimes if I'm seeing the border is like really, really being like, and then the coat, and I'm like, that's fine. Like it's <laughs> just get the pose. Like the pose really matters. All of yeah. the costuming details, they they have that. That's mm -hmm. like <laughs> mm -hmm. those yeah. things are such like a domino effect. And I think like a really good bard artist is one that can sort of step outside of themselves and their own work and think about what the next person after what you do is going to handle next. Because yep. uh, I think that's what helped a lot being a revisionist mm -hmm. on Young Justice yeah. is because there was just so many things that to keep in mind that um, not calling out any specific board artists, but when I see like, mm -hmm. God, it, 
they just deleted all those layers, like it'd be so much easier to like organize. Every time a revisionist talks <laughs> about how they <laughs> delete layers, I just feel like so blessed. So I'm blessed. sorry, Alex. <laughs> Some of those layers were needed. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> players were needed. <laughs> Chris, on, on Kipa, there were so many times our supervising director, Young, he, he's oh. from Korea. He grew up like animating out there and then he moved out here. He'd look at the boards I do and he'd be like, they can't animate this. No. <laughs> and I'd be like, just don't yeah. pick it up. Just leave it. I just want to see them try. If they try, <laughs> you know, they call them up, like, this is too hard. Oh. <laughs> I think oh, the only God. thing for Young Justice that Chris did was like sometimes we'd be looking through his boards and then he'll just have like a whole spiel of like margin drawings that he'd do and like ooh <laughs> and then, like so like maybe that was a pleasant surprise. <laughs> That's so we honestly are they kind of a oh, it's so funny. And sometimes uh, the team is like a certain size. I'm like oh I wonder what they have. Sometimes like some artists will still leave like. uh they're like reference photos on like layers, but then sometimes they're all in different layers for some reason. And like maybe they drew like the character's arm on one layer, but then a hand is on a different layer. <laughs> like it yeah, might be like Allison is seeing the part of the board nobody <laughs> wants anybody <laughs> to ever see ever. <laughs> yeah. This is not what like the Danny, ideal. <laughs> Danny, the storyboard supervisor, is triggered so bad right now. Yeah. Look at this. Danny is staring at the board. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very differently. Like we keep a lot of the crazy camera shit and the crazy animation, but what we do is through uh, like pre-programmed scripting and a couple other things, it we format it for the paper printout. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So we just decided that we didn't want to give up all the bells and mm -hmm. whistles. And we just would rather add a process at the end of it that would facilitate what the outsourcing studios get. Um, yeah. I don't know. I like. I like spelling out a lot of those camera things and a lot of the mm -hmm. like more micro shit like the the icing i like the icing i yep. love the icing Same. um Same. and so we just yeah i don't know i mean well i don't i'd be curious because i've never like i said i keep saying i've never worked anywhere else so i'm, I'm curious to see like the one thing I would say about the camera thing, like I think the one instance I can think of in particular where it's not super necessary is every time you want to do a cam shake of something happening, like, oh, I have to keyframe every place where the camera's going to shake. You can literally just have a separate layer. And then if you look at my frame, you do these double brackets on the four corners. That's a cam Fire. shake. Sometimes that's enough for you to do it because the editor themselves, they can edit that in like oh. a camp but yeah, so I, I do the cam shake and still add that on the corners yeah, i'm so stupid yeah i, I do both <laughs> honestly i am yeah. with you i, I do both because i'm like okay so it says cam shake but let's also do the cam shake <laughs> so they really know there's gonna be a cam shake <laughs> but, but you see, like this is why when i when i got into animation in in 09 as a revisionist right like when when it was time to do scene description because because what the 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 philosophy that Warner Brothers had because because Danny I'm 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 just like you guys saw my Ninja Turtles board that I posted up you know like I did I do the whole thing right but when I got in as a revisionist it was like the, your drawings those can get misconstrued as one thing or another who knows like what character blah 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 but. Uh, a Korean production team translating English into Korean, that's easy every time for them to go like, oh, blah, 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 does ABC and there's a cam shake, right? Like, so the scene descriptions used to be the thing that that was like your last line of defense to make sure that all your creative decisions got in there. What's happened now is, you know, I've had freelance board artists on, on a show and they turn their boards in and I don't see a scene description. I'm like, uh, hey, how you doing, buddy? You're going to go ahead and write those scene descriptions down because... Yeah. If if nobody can understand these nine thousand things Captain Animator did on these boards, I need to see it in words so I can go like A, B, and C. This is the objective language that I know how I know what what what's going on. So it is. It's to me, it's not about uh, not doing the creative things. To me, it's about knowing what you're doing and how that's gonna export, right? Like knowing what I'm doing, because Warner Brothers, man, you know, like a lot of the studios, animation studios, smaller boutique animation studios, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're not trying to do, you know, joie de vivre anything. They're just like, yo, 
we got a month to animate one of your episodes. And so you send them these finesse elements and that stuff come back and they're like, uh, there you go. We're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have to you know. Yeah. So um, it's, it's that craziness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, what we do, they don't, they don't get the crazy shit. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like the, the end of the, pro like what we've, the program scripts and all that, the pre layout process basically removes it. So mm -hmm. the reason we keep it in, I mean, I don't want to speak for everybody. Like, I don't know how the directors feel about this, but like w what I've gathered is the reason we keep it in is when we watch the animatic, we have a sense of what we're going for. And then what mm -hmm. goes out to Korea is basically all of that subtracted, all of the well, extraneous so subtracted. Because of your mm. particular circumstance where you do more of your stuff in house, like I think from even though I was at Powerhouse, I was at the one in LA. And so the way that you guys ran in Texas, uh, when you guys handled like certain bigger, like the big epic fight stuff, I think I always assumed that it was handled in house and that any of the other animation that did have to get done, that's what you guys would ship like overseas. But then when it came to really priority money shots, like I just thought it was like Spencer, like, uh, you know, everyone else in that studio that would like kind of handle it in house. So it's a mix. Um, we, we just can't afford to have all of those. We have a lot of action. Uh, we just can't afford to do all of it in house. So mm -hmm. inevitably just some of the shots make it out. Um, but you're right. Like the money shots do, we typically keep them and do them inter uh, internally, but, yeah. um, some of the other stuff that gets sent thing, out. Like, you know, larger studios, at least like when everything does get shipped, like, I know in Young Justice, there were certain stu certain studios that were hired that would handle those kind of shots. And then there'd be another studio that would handle like lesser priority mm -hmm. kind of shots just for the mm -hmm. sake of everything getting done, so. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's the same at it's Disney. I think they actually recently, on Owl House, they have an in-house animator who, mm -hmm. like they, they, they brought in an in-house animator so, because they have kind of these anime, like really crazy <laughs> shots. I never knew who it was. They were like, we have an in-house animator. I'm like, really? The one like, it's the, is weird. Yeah, they just talk about like, I've heard the tales of the in-house <laughs> animator. Like, this is literally a war. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. 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 Storyboard, I was like, oh, I'm finna do this then. It's doing it. Spencer's like, yo, hold yeah. up, man. It's I'm me. It's all me. Yeah. 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 No, like, man, you finna animate this grass. You finna animate this grass. <laughs> Four hundred legs. Yeah, like, oh the each for, blade uh, of grass. <laughs> the rise of human TV. It was essentially like Kevin. Like for I don't know if anyone's seen like the latest like final episodes of the fights because I saw those like around the time I got hired on the movie because I was like I want to watch all the animatics and see what they do and I'd seen Kevin stuff before and then when I'd seen what how he had handled it it was just pretty much like okay Kevin's gonna like just animate this out and then Flying Bark like an amazing studio from Australia that is like so good mm -hmm. so good like uh, I'm really Kevin, excited for the movie like Kevin Kevin, been, I, that dude has been insane since yeah. day one straight up when that dude came into Warner Brothers to, to his first time he was in Jay Oliva's class and he came in the board on uh, Justice League Dark. And Kevin, what I swear to God, you go into the office where he was sitting and he'd be in the chair like this. <laughs> he'd be on his seat like this. And he'd have like a, panda, like a panda hood on or something. Yeah, that was, that was Kevin. That was Kevin all the time. And I went into the office one time and I go, what's up, Kevin? And he put his finger out. And I, I put my, my fist out to dap and he put his finger I'm out. I'm sorry, someone he, said in the chat, like L from Death Note. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you. I put, I put my fist out to dap Kevin. Kevin turned and he, he touched my fist and he said, boop. And then he went went back around. And wow. I was like, yo, this Kevin, we saw the boards that this dude did. I'm telling you right now, we we're looking at it. We're like, yo, this dude animated the effect. This is his first boarding gig ever. Now yeah. look, none of it worked for that movie. You know what I'm saying? Like he had a demon coming out of the ground, eating another demon and then Batman and one like, I was like, what the hell? He animated it all. And so like, I remember when <laughs> James Tucker came and was like, hey man, that kid's gonna do something. That kid's gonna do some magic one day, right? And then fast forward, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I was like, okay, here we go, sure enough. That dude's a freak, man. He's insane. Yeah, he's just insane. Especially the responsible, like he was responsible for the voice of like Rise of TMNT. Like it definitely yeah. wouldn't have 
and the kind of show it was had it not been for him and like Super the exciting, other people man. that were brought in like and I think that's like one of those things I remember being really important is when people would see the boards that are posted on Twitter I think a lot of people wonder like does it have to be like fully animated out like that and I'm like these are people that have like that like they also literally happen to be animators and that's mm -hmm. just like how they're going to board out their own work and so it yeah. doesn't mean that you have to like always meet those standards because it also like depends that, this is a special type of board artist this is not yeah. a normal <laughs> like board artist that, I like those types of for that type of show, like it definitely fits for that yeah but mm -hmm. you don't yeah, have to work that way for like if you yeah. work on like you know steven universe or like you know, primetime shows like Bob's Burgers, like they don't board like that at all. Cause primetime is like, that's a whole other kind of like mm -hmm. uh, work set too. Um, I only comedy, worked on a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Comedy and more hard, like uh, six to, I, although the demographics mean nothing, but usually six to 11 are not, not going quite that crazy. So mm -hmm. no, generally don't need to board that way. Yeah, <laughs> Ethan, you were I saying boarded, something. I boarded for a little bit. <laughs> Bento Box on Central Park, which is the same creator who did Bob's Burgers. And it was kind of like unlearning a lot of the things that I boarded before because he's like, it's filmed in a very Wes Anderson setup camera. Like he likes just that like one point perspective, centered frame, like very minimal acting, like uh, like no smiling. Like the characters, like we wouldn't draw smile lines. Like their happy line, their happy line is their mouth is just straight. And that's a character being mm. happy There's on that no show. Joy. Huh. And so like, I remember that they would look very specifically for if the line curves slightly on like the smile line, they're like, no, they don't like that. <laughs> so, I feel that I feel like, like no the curve. show. It feels wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sinachi, you were saying something, and then we oh, no, no, no. I just, oh, I just, no, I wasn't saying anything. I was kind of adding it into what Allison was saying when she was talking about Kevin, because I always felt some type of way when he would give me notes on my CMNT stuff, and he would go like, oh my god, this is awesome. I'm like, dude, do you see your work? I'm trying to catch up. Don't tell me this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you mocking me? <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, I, I, you mean? I don't like your tone. <laughs> That's so good. So dope. Yeah. I feel like actually on comedy stuff, and it was something that I had to learn from um, one of my first mentors, directors was like an, a former animator from Space Jam, which is really funny because like now that I work for Bruce Smith, I'm like, Space Jam again? Like it's just, Space Jam has been following me my entire career. But like, <laughs> but like this guy was like, oh no, th there's like, it's in, like it's it's cool to like pose things out, but like there is something to not moving things. Like it's kind of like that text mm -hmm. Avery thing where it's like the character is completely still, and then just the pupils move. That has an mm -hmm. impact. Whereas if you have like they're always moving, it'll just become more swimmy when it animates. So yeah. like now, like I'm proud. I'm really like there'll be moments where I'll, I'll give the board artist. I'm like, nope, just just the eyes, mm -hmm. just the eyes move. Nothing else really? moves. Red, <laughs> red is like a uh, red, like, red can do a master class. Red can do a master class. I'm say it when stuff yeah. is moving for no reason. I'm like, yeah. you're like, yeah. you're yeah. gonna lose. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's pretty great. Like it's the idea of like once again, it's just the part. Like why why? Yeah, you know I mean like why do we do what we do in in a yeah. scene or in a shot or whatever? It's just the the why, and you're like, oh yeah, good point. You know. Yeah. I mean, this is a question for you this uh, for you like coming up to now directing on a feature like what are those things that you're unlearning from like rather than you know what you're going to feature that how are you find that middle ground like what is that what is that new philosophy for you now i'm boarding the things um, that you're unlearning yeah yeah i mean it, and i said i'm learning and that's probably the 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 wrong word for it it's probably more the sort of like you're like you are responsible for your for for your vision, for your idea, right? Like you are trying to communicate something. You're trying to show something. You're trying to like do it. And, and in TV, like it was the same thing, but you just, it wasn't to the degree that it is in feature, right? Like in TV, you're trying to get your idea down, but you were relegated to a lot, a lot smaller of a, of a box for that. And you're just going like, if I could just, you know what I mean? Like, ah, like if I can get that one little thing in there, you know, and, and, um, and feature, 
it's sort of like, if you don't say it, it's not getting said. If you don't do it, it's not getting done. If you don't make it, it's not getting made, right? And so with that, you begin to sort of remove some of those things that you previously prioritized because you're going like, and, and you just become almost insensitive to your own content because you're just sort of like, nah, fuck it. Like, let's do it this way. Let's just, who needs it? Let's do it this way. Who needs it? Let's do it, this, right? Like you're constantly mining for the great. And so because of that, all of the middle level stuff, you're just like, man, and, and, and I still, I, like, I still like, I'm doing a lot of the designs and stuff on, on our movie, at least the, the initial uh, stuff and, and boarding things here and there and just boarding little moments and, and writing stuff out here and there. But you just, you become very like, ah, it, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't feel, it doesn't say, it doesn't do. So get rid of it, let's go again. So that's more of what has been on, on the feature. Uh, Cause it's just like, at some point we're taking this stuff and we're putting it in the hands of people that are here with us and around us. So you, you're, it's not so sacred. The stakes aren't so high because when you give it to that guy, he's not overseas in Korea on a different time zone. He's right next door and you go like, ah, actually, you know what? Move that, change that, let me do that. You know what I mean? Like, so because of that, you're just rushing the failure a lot faster. You're like, let's hurry up because we're not getting an Oscar for the first draft. So get the garbage out, let's go. You know, and Red is constantly in the, in the best way. Like he's a homie. So he's just like, ah, let's just try it different. Let's just try something different. Last two weeks, we've just been literally looking at scripts and going, no, take that moment, change that, take that, change that, move that, push that, pull that. So like, it's that, that, that transition has been nice. It's a lot more of what you would want to do in TV. You're able to do it in feature, which feels it's really also, good. It's kind of more of a thumbnail process. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of movies I've been on where you get the whole movie boarded in six weeks with a crew of a, like not that many people. So you get the entire movie up in like six weeks Mm -hmm. like boarding and then the editors take a little time to edit it but you watch it and then in a week or two you reboard half the movie so it's like it's like clay like so <laughs> your drawings are stick figures like the stuff you see in the art of books mm -hmm. those are not production boards those are like oh we have a screening to the public let's bring in someone to make these look nice because <laughs> yeah I'm like, just waiting this because I like I've always seen the also, boards that my <laughs> friends are doing and then I see the boards in the art of book and I'm like just don't I'm just I'm yeah. so confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're watching you, a screening with like some animation, <laughs> like yeah. some layout, and then an occasional board, and they're all done up like that. But like true production boards are, are just chicken scratch, like clear, like you can see all clear acting. You've never left a face blank. Like Bro, you can always tell the acting. Last week, last week we were we we're sitting in a meeting with our production guy. He opened up a PDF. Uh, like that we have put together for uh, a, you know a pitch and it was just all of our designs and some board things. He, he, this one that he opened up was from I think April I swear to god it looked like it was seven years old it looked like it was seven years old and I was like oh my god like what the, <laughs> even the story I'm like what was that and it's because every week you're just going nope next nope next one no nope point nothing is sacred except the finish line in people, okay. right like nothing is and Every yeah. step in there is an illusion, and you're just sort of going like, eh, and then you get to the finish, like, wow, look at that, we did that. I'm like, bro, we killed like 98 different things every day. We murdered great ideas for the sake of like, it just nothing was sacred until that finish. Well, like, well, so we that. did a first act screening, and like we we watched it on like a Friday, and then reboarded like 35 percent just over the weekend, and then re-edited, yeah. watched it again. You know, like, yeah, it's it's very like everything's just a, a quick little sketch. You can only get so like personally attached to like, I really, but this scene was so great to board out. Like the drawings are awesome. These are my oh. best friends ever. And it's like, that shit might not stay. And oh, that's a character. <laughs> that's a character. We keep laughing about it in text. We're like, let's just get the funeral arrangements ready. <laughs> <laughs> By the whole movie. I mean, we had one idea that we were like, what if this character actually was not there this whole time? Whip the whole thing, gone. Ch just yeah, change right, it. Let's wrap these thousand drawings. I'll do them, I'll do them in a couple of days. Like, we'll yeah, do a different version. No. I like to imagine oh, that already had like, the actor cast for that character too, and like, I can't wait. <laughs> it's the reason why no. That's why everything is so <laughs> It's the reason why everything is 11th hours. 
<laughs> yeah, oh, no. That's why everything is 11th hour because you're just sort of like, I don't know, like next week, that could be a terrible idea. You know what I mean? Like, because everything, it's a chain and every link, you're just sort of going like, what if we twisted that link? Because that's a great idea, but what if we pushed it? You do it, and then you just watch the whole thing go. And you're like, all right, well, bring in the other chain. You know what I mean? And and that's a, <laughs> so that, in, in TV, that you're just sort of like, no, man, because everything needs to be there because we're going to send it overseas. And they are blah, 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 blah. Oh, man, and, that was and, a learning curve. Because, like, I watched the first screening of Kipo Pad. It's like, all right, let's reboard all of it. It's really interesting working with feature people in TV. I think it's actually really great because like there's you're right, there's like this lack of of preciousness. And so like I, I love working with like Bruce Smith and he's like, Oh yeah, this is great. Let's do this and thing instead. I'm like, cool. But then at, yep. there's like a point at which I like look at the line producer and I'm like, I, I think we I think we are almost done with these. I think <laughs> yeah. I, I think yeah. we have to stop soon. <laughs> I can yeah. tell <laughs> yeah. and, and like feature feature thinking, you're like a bunch of, like red is like a Lannister. He's just like murder it. It's just murder it right here. Yes. On the table. And we're like, oh, like oh, because it'll get birth to something better. Yeah. You're like, what? No, we need that blood. We don't need the body. Just well, the blood. Also, Let's get it out like, of with you and Chase, you guys are like, I want these drawings beautiful and when they're animated. I'm like, I don't give a shit if it looks good, if it's animated. <laughs> Right. All I care is like, like, it, change it. And you're like, like wait, it's beautiful. And like, it doesn't work That's anymore. I mean, I, I, you know, I grew up with with two older brothers. You know what I mean? And like, they've always been like, dude, that shit is garbage, right? And so you're like, all right, man, whatever. Um, and so like <laughs> for for Brad, like. <laughs> It's like you could easily if you could easily go like, damn, does this dude hate my stuff? Like, is that? And I know Red is always just going like, no, like let's we're mining. Let's just keep finding the the better. Let's just keep trying to find the better. Like, don't spend a bunch of time on it, and you won't connect yourself to it, right? Like, just get it going. Yes. And let's figure yeah. out what it, what it feels like. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 yeah. And it's, it's it's really it's great. Keep like, there's all kinds of messed up drawings all over the place because. We didn't really value that in the boards. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. we didn't spend any time on that. We would just like throw stuff out and report it chicken scratch, knowing it was gonna come back. That might cause it to be animated poorly, but it, mm -hmm. it would be an improvement on the story point. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah the perspective good. of like thinking that your boards need to be that way. And I think again, tying it back to like seeing what boards posted on uh, social media, everyone kind of just sees the end result and thinks that's how it's always started. But yeah, those boards yeah. are a result of that trial and error process. Yeah. Way, like, yeah. cause that board could have been a totally different monster compared to what you saw at the end. Like, yeah. it I, really I, I had this thing. experience where I posted like some boards, like it was the practice stuff, but they were really, they, I just timed them out properly, but it was garbage drawing. And then some guy sent me a DM and I was like, nice but i knew you can do better and i told him yo i was just working with like <laughs> yeah he told me that and i was i was i told him yo what you like? that? Wait, we <laughs> talk about that because <laughs> and comments are full of just pointing out mistakes or stuff that could be better or like i told him i told him, so I, told him I was i was, I was okay. I'm working with like some directors and you see all this beautiful stuff you're talking about right now, they don't give a shit about that stuff. They just want <laughs> me to like hit the mark. So don't tell me you think I can do better. I don't care. I'm trying to learn how to draw faster. So leave me the purple. Rude. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. And also, I you can I find him? No. <laughs> that's so yeah, because he, he, <laughs> he always <laughs> see finished <laughs> stuff, but then we don't see like the, the process that goes into it. And it's something I'm trying to learn how to turn off this. Oh, I need to present beautiful drawings and the story is just nonsense. So I can imagine like everyone probably just starts off with that mindset just by nature when you begin working in boards especially when you're thinking about like these are my first boards on this job like making a certain impression like especially if you've watched boards from like previous seasons or like previous like artists beforehand you're like oh it has to be this way and like mm -hmm. i think it's good to get rid of that feeling right out the gate and then just yeah. sort of you know unlearning for the job that you're on because Every new job that you're going to have after, you're going to have to do that every time you start something new. 
even if you did something mm -hmm. a certain way on a previous show, you're going to have to unlearn anyways when you get on the next thing because it's a totally different mm -hmm. like type of game. Yeah. So. It's just it's finding the objective, like finding the objective universals. You know what I mean? Like when I when I got it, and still happens, man. Like I draw the way that I draw because that's that's just I that's how I draw. You know what I mean? And for a while, that you're the anxieties and stressors when you're a director and, and a production people are going like, where's the thing? Why why are you drawing? Why are you making this? Why, la, 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 la. And even the criticisms that come around. If you're on a bad production, like there's a lot of criticisms where you're just like. I don't know how to gauge that, right? Um, that's so, that's too pretty. Well, what's pretty to you and what's pretty to me, right? Like I've seen some of your pretty and that shit was garbage, right? Like, and, and some of my pretty looks different, right? So so in that, right, like, and you can't, you're going like, man, how, I can't say that to my director. Like, what the hell? Like this dude has been doing it for 20 years, right? So you, it's like defining the language. And one of the things that when I was on Keep On, in fact, um, you know, like how clean is too clean and how, what should I, blah, 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 blah. and I'm just like, look, man, as a board artist, you are going for clarity, not cleanliness. Like, let's just get cleanliness out of this dialogue. I don't care about clean. If it's clear, it's done. I don't care. It's clarity, 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 clarity. What are they emoting? What are they doing? How are they standing? If it's clear, as a storyboard artist, you've done your job. Clarity over cleanliness all the time. And, and, and it's sort of replacing some of that language because we don't realize how damaging that language can be to, you know, this little artist who just started at this thing. We're going like, yo, that's too clean. Get that shit out of there. Like, yo, this dude is drawing yeah. the way they know how to draw. You know what I mean? And so yeah. shifting the the dialogue is always, I feel like that's part of our responsibility. That's okay, so difficult. Like if you get the wrong kind of advice from starting artists like that too. Like someone, like you wouldn't want someone's talents to be hindered because like, maybe your way it's not like their way for certain so as long as i think like really good directors i imagine like they just understand what those artists strengths are and then they're like here's how you can really elevate it to get to that clarity point that you need to and however way that you do it mm -hmm. that you do it really well that's all that matters so yeah, yep, yeah. i feel like what happens yeah. a lot yep. of times mm -hmm. is you end up like the first couple of boards everybody comes out like on a first couple of boards on a new show everybody simultaneously has no idea what they're doing but also is trying to do like the like the insane version. So like the yeah. first couple of buttons, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this is probably unsustainable. But like after like board number three, and everybody's like, I don't know, and I'm like, okay, this this and this is all I need. All of this other yeah. stuff. If it's killing you to do this, just let it go. Just let yeah. it go. Yeah. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, straight it's up. Not really it's something to brag about if you're like, I didn't get any sleep when I got these boards done. Like. That's oh my god. Yo, can we talk about this? <laughs> Golly. I don't want people to do this or to live this way. It's bad. <laughs> because you yeah. can say that and then those boards get thrown away. And I don't want to think about like your mental health like at that point. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, like, I, I feel like your personal well-being making a cartoon. That's where those two things are. I feel like, I, I, like everyone's like, I'm wearing my masochism like a badge of honor. I didn't yeah. sleep, but I haven't seen the sun in days. I'm like, that doesn't sound great. Like, <laughs> my eyes, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. yeah. I used to think it sounded great. <laughs> no, 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 no. That like really isn't needed in the process. Like, yeah. 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 I mean, it happens. Sometimes you have to pull crazy out, especially like I'm sure, like. Because I feel like what happened when I switched to directing, because I'm like, I refuse to have board artists living this way. So sometimes I'm like, okay, I'll take it a little bit. But like, even I am like, okay, only this much working after hours and then like hanging out or going outside or going skating. Like, even if I'm trying to like shield my team from doing the madness, like kind of doing it myself, I try to keep limits to myself because I'm like, no, can't do it anymore. <laughs> can't live that way anymore. Yeah. I mean, to go back to the whole, like, in drawings, I remember, like, I was late on a deadline, but I was trying to get everything clean, it's like, to get the board presentable, and then my director was like, these boards don't reflect who you as a person, like, don't, and that just really hit me, I'm like, oh, you're right, like, we put so much of our identity in it, we want it to be, like, perfect, and he's like, no, don't worry mm -hmm. about that, but I, that really struck with me, and then, mm -hmm. he's coming from feature where he's like, get it up, get it up, get it up, and I was transitioning from TV, where it's like, nope, I get everything laid out and perfect, my model and everything. Mm -hmm. So that was that's a, that's a big difference in feature too. Is like 
you don't work past six. And if you do, you write down every hour. They're very careful. They're like, if you work mm-hmm. past six or you work on the weekend, you write that shit down and you're getting paid for it. They're like very, they don't want to get sued, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. I assume. Yeah. And that was, a, that was an interesting thing on Keepa. We started being like, wait, someone came in on the weekend? Then no, you're writing that shit down because I'm used to feature. And yeah. like, we were trying to, mm-hmm. and people would try to hide it. Like, it, I think people are just used to that in TV. You're like, no, yep. you don't work on the weekend. You don't work at six. Like, there's so many negative, there's so many negative, um, like negative parameters and, and identity things. And, you know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's, it's sort of a weird thing where you have to remind, we have to remind ourselves and, and of course the people around us that like, I'm not saying that I'm some... working right now. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping that hypocrisy also, team red. Red. <laughs> So, like, yeah, acting yeah, is like thrown like, off all of my work life, whatever. It's just madness. But <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, dude. But yeah, it's the it's just the thing of like what we're doing is taking something that for our entire lives is so organic and inspiration based, and just weird and nebulous in so many different ways, and we're taking it and 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 when you work in it you're jarring it up in a certain amount of time and it's looking a certain way and it's being delivered to someone else for their criticism and then put back in your life. Like, think about the psychosis, like psychologically, what that does to you uh, just in these small incremental ways. And 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 the industry was, a lot of it was built on, on, that, on that premise and that idea because you're not seen, you're not heard and no one gives a shit, get it done and move on. And it's just sort of like, really intentionally deconstructing a lot of that stuff like i have to do it with myself a lot of times you know what i mean like i i got four kids i you know you see my son coming like i'm i'm with my kids and and living you know what i mean like i'm doing stuff and oftentimes i have to tell myself like no nah, man like you're just not gonna be able to do that right like and yeah, i forget well, like myself. stop it's like to stop seeing yourself as like the cog in the machine of like mm-hmm. whatever like animation studio in and just remembering that like you're a human that needs like you're six to eight hours of sleep, like just get those at least if you're gonna do anything. Yeah, God, I feel like what so Andy much. said about um, your self-worth not being tied to your work should be on every fucking artist's wall because like you, you're spending, most artists spend like the bulk of their lives constantly trying to get better at something to get to a professional <laughs> level. You're constantly assessing yourself. You're constantly comparing yourself to other people and like how that affects your self-esteem and your sense of worth is i mean it's wild and we don't really i don't think there's enough conversation about that like about how just the nature of being trying to be competent enough at something or professional enough at something like uh, what that what toll that takes you know um and i think it's wild how far the pendulum has swung about this conversation when it comes to like grinding because 10 years ago every artist i looked up to was basically saying grind 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 like if yeah. you're eating or stopping to sleep Why you're dumb piece of shit like what are you doing grind. yeah and yeah. it was like no. if you're not working all the time you're gonna get left behind and yeah. the anxiety that instilled in an entire generation of artists i feel like is uh pretty it's fucked stupid. up <laughs> pretty yeah. 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 yeah it's I was work. I was doing freelance at the start of my career. I was uh, first. Of, I I've learned all of these like harder lessons and as a designer and character designer was on when I was on the East Coast and it had a lot to do with the fact that I was also working in advertising and commercial. So, like TV is fast, but sometimes like advertising commercial the timelines are like wild. Uh, something like less than a week. I'm hired for two days to do X amount of work. So it's just like finding that balance, but I learned a lot of those hard lessons. And then I was working freelancing under somebody, they were in their forties, they had two kids and they were still doing, they were still telling me like, oh yeah, I didn't sleep last <laughs> night. I've been up all night. And I was just like, I had a moment. I was like, I'm in my mid twenties. And I was just like, I don't want that. Yeah. Like, you don't want to I'm, I'm like not even like in a point where I'm like sacrifice. Like, I'm like not even far enough in my career where I'm like, oh, I'm see, I'm just like, I don't want to do that. Like now, yeah, yeah. I just graduated from college. college. Like, I don't want to do that. Moment. Where you're like, <laughs> I don't want to be that way. Like I, I want to like travel, man. No. Like what? Like no. What? Like I was asleep. Like they get pissed off when it's like, yeah. I, I mean, like 
I didn't do it. Like I didn't work on it over the weekend. I just did it when I was supposed to do it. I think what upset me was a, a lot was sometimes he uh, like sometimes I'm like oh I like it because that was new it was one of those things where it's like I was new you know I'm like super green I don't know like I'm still figuring out my workflow time management skills and like they would get really like kind of upset at me and I'm just like I'm sorry I'm not trying to kill myself <laughs> because I'm like I, I, really, I'm like, I need to do this I need to do this for like over a career I'm like I just started I'm like I'm gonna make mistakes but like I'm not there's certain things I think I had a lot of bad habits in college and then the only way I got through college I told myself like these are the only four years I'm allowed to pull this shit and then I have to spend the next few years or months like relearning better habits post-college because there was something about like being a student college I was just like I thought it was okay and then as I was like meeting my end of my like college existence I was like this is not okay I'll have to take six months off from like even looking for work just to fix all of my bad habits of not sleeping well or not eating well or I was doing a lot of bad like stress related like I was exercising too much to like mod like moderate my stress and I was like no I just need to like sleep more yeah yeah and like just like everything else needs to be adjusted. So it's just like learning, readjusting and recalibrating and then encountering this person. I was like, oh no, like this is not the way I want to. Work. It's just like some people that just like, like the misery loves company kind of feeling with them. It's like, oh, you all should suffer for this. And I'm like, I no. Did, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, You're definitely right. right where it's like, it, it was a generational thing and we're in like, the middle of a transition where I feel like before kind of mm -hmm. where you guys are talking about like ADHD or like like mental health issues or concerns about like just well-being and wellness like wasn't really things we were thinking of and definitely wasn't mm -hmm. things you were thinking of if you were in the arts like it was almost the reverse where it's like how badly do you want this do you have no <laughs> friends like it's like yeah. like it's it was almost like glamorized do you have no yeah. friends yeah, it was definitely glamorized. It was definitely glamorized, and it, and, it, oh, and you were always doing the the comparison metrics. You were always doing it like, oh, that means they want it more than I do, or that means they're better than I am, and like always. And 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 we still like. I'm not speaking about this from like, oh yeah, I'm no man. That's there's still times where I'll go a week and I sleep three hours a night. You know what I mean? And and a part of it is because it's the it's the I think again it's like why right like i do that because there are times where you know i'm spending time with the fam and when they go to sleep I, I have these creative things where i'm like oh i need to do this and so i'm gonna spend the time doing that i'm not gonna hold my team to that standard or pass on some sort of mantle that that is to be glamorized that's disgusting right like this idea between you know the just the individuals in this conversation, there's so many life variables and differences between us that it's like it's dumb as hell to even think that there can be a similar baseline that we all you know activate on. It's dumb. It, it does, it's not reality in any metric at all. But for some reason, we bought into it, right? The hustle, muscle, and and it, I think it's just detrimental to us on a deeper level for sure. It's ridiculous. I'm curious now because of all like our productions having been forced into quarantine how much that has shifted or not shifted those mentalities for people just because like there's sort of like less structures in our day now for that so it's like really forcing ourselves to build our right systems for ourselves to work like in like the situations that we're in now too and i'm still crazy. trying to figure out my rhythm Same. yeah <laughs> still, I'm still okay. trying like, to be that I do the like normal work day and then there'll be other days where I'm like so I guess now this time in the middle of the day is the breaking time and then these hours like the hours that are work hours are not always where work hours were before yeah, <laughs> yeah but I, <laughs> yeah. like yeah, I feel like, like, like it's okay yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the drive home uh, you know uh, an hour drive home would allow me to decompress mentally out of the day and sort of like transition into you know my love my four crazies and, and wife when i get home that you know like there's going to be a need that's gone right like i'll i'll finish up and then go downstairs and it's like damn i need to buy my mom i'm like oh my god you know and and, and so by, the, by the late the late night hour you're I'm exhausted mentally because that was another thing 
not only were we working from home, but as a black man, I'm watching black dudes getting killed. And you're going like, what a time, what a time. I'm fine, no, I'm fine. And then you're sitting there like, why am I just crying? And I can't even yeah, draw. my different. emotions have been no, off the charts. Like, I was like pontificating to my dad the other day and I'm like, I, why am I, what if, I'm so sorry. Yes. I don't know, there's a lot of feelings. <laughs> like, oh my God, it was <laughs> heavy. Be and, able to like still be doing what we were doing like when everything else was like going on like that. That's the thing. It's like you are, but the, the effect of it, I didn't even realize it until like we're sitting in meetings because we're on, gosh, Red, well, we're on like probably eight to 10 Zoom calls a day. Yeah, Easy. we're like, you start at nine, you end at six, you're trying to draw while the Zoom calls are going. Yeah. yeah. You're trying to juggle the whole movie in your mind, the three of us. And, and then you and, stop. And like, and then you guys are dealing with crazy shit. Like, it was bananas. It's been bananas. So I'm still trying to find that rhythm and that is is you know it's just like oh and I, I mean you know i grew up poor as hell and this is a dream for me right like so there's the heaviness and the weight of that and sort of like damn like you know so yeah all that stuff I mean, we, we don't talk about it it's not talked about and I'm, I'm glad that we're you know in this to dialogue about it in this way um i i really feel like it's something that needs to continue happening and what the end goal of it is who knows but hopefully people feel seen and heard this happening sure. yeah well, i think a lot of people are home on the internet now so like i would hope that people would be less afraid of like what so and so would think or what these communities would think of like i mean if these these are genuine feelings and emotions that you're going through during all these times and you're very valid in feeling that and you should feel the right to communicate these things publicly because then you'd be yeah. amazing like how many other people are like in the exact same like creative ruts where it was really hard for me to like get certain boards done like mm -hmm. I was just like I need to like really decompress because like all I was thinking about was just work and then not taking the like mental breaks for myself that I really needed so well and also with these big studios talking about oh we're going to hire more people of color and we're going to hire more women and everything I'm like that's cool great uh, assess your infrastructure that's let's do that right because the idea that I know some young brothers that are in this industry and when all of this shit was going down, when they sat and watched the dude being choked to death for nine minutes, they had to uh, beg and plead for a day off. Like, that's stupid as hell to me. That shouldn't, I, I don't have to beg you for that. I literally just watched someone that looked like me get choked to death by a, an officer. I should be able to email you and go, hey, I'm not turning this thing in tomorrow. I'm taking tomorrow off. Your response to that should be, hey, you know what? Take tomorrow and the next three days off and we'll restructure it all. We'll figure out a way to get the thing, we're still gonna sell the movie on September 5th or whatever it is, right? Like the infrastructures need to really be assessed in order to facilitate some of the things that we're filling on the lower level, right? Like you can't just say we're hiring new people into a bag of shit. Like it's fine. No, that you gotta, you gotta, you gotta assess. Sorry, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like, oh no, no, it's just very funny. The tone jump, I, I laugh when I'm like, my brain kept process so fast enough. It's like, just laugh, just laugh. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it has been such a trip, like with a career that is like pretty, pretty well, like doing like this year has been like really nice on a personal level, sort of, except for, you know, the emotional dumpster fire that is the rest of the year. And my brain is just trying so hard to like, deal with the like aggravation and the the fear and the heartbreak that I think it is being a black person in this country right now whilst also being like but my career like it's just such a like a mind like the mind fuck to do the two things like, simultaneously like, oh I'm drawing yeah. fun cartoons yeah when all of that is just happening yeah. behind yeah yeah I, I feel really grateful the crew talks about it at least but like that is a lot because of the nature of the show that i'm on like a lot Our of people speech. on this particular show are feeling yeah. this so yeah. dustin and i have definitely with with our production team and our creative team i mean rad rad being our our creative producer right like our our team has been i mean from day one like from the jump before any of this stuff went down um, we got in and immediately felt heard and, and, and activated, you know what I mean? And, and in a very honest and transparent way, it wasn't like tap dancing. They weren't tap dancing and go like, you got two black guys directing, right? Like they really, truly, authentically were just sort of like, how do we build an atmosphere that will progress and like reflect 
in the creative output. And so that's been really amazing. And, and, and during everything, they're just constantly like, you know, whatever you guys need in order to, you know, calm yourselves or relax. And it's been really great. But yeah, you, you're definitely constantly just struggling with that perspective of like, man, things are really amazing, living the dream, but also, damn, how do we, and, and, and some of our content because of our writer and because of my brother and I being a director, some of the content pokes and touches right on a lot of this stuff because I feel responsible for talking about some of these things and introducing them in ways, but you can't escape it. You just sort of have to figure out a way to navigate it, I, I feel like, and it's- you know, There's definitely gonna be like a big shift of things like once we like get through quarantine and like whenever normalcy, whatever that means is gonna like come back to because like the way that things were structured before is definitely not gonna be the same like after this, like regardless. No. Like there's just no way that's gonna happen. <laughs> So the sky is literally forever. red is how much we're just not going back apparently you know, I'm just going on my walks it's like well, at least like, i can go on a walk like because i've been sitting on my ass for so long and then i'll look outside i'm like mm, nah, i can't do that so, like i just yeah. had a gym. Like, i had a home gym like set up in my garage so i was like so excited to use it like I think I like, told Chris and my other family about it. I was like, I've got a rowing machine. This is going to be great. And like, now I can't like breathe outside. Nope. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Danny, uh, Danny, <laughs> so. Danny you're, in, uh, you're in Texas, yeah? Mm -hmm. is, is the sky yellow there too, a bit? The sky is so far is okay. Okay, let's I think go. The way but, it's like, it's kind of like. Uh, it's moving in the Vancouver it's direction. Like California, it's kind of going more up like sort right. of that direction. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Cool. I mean, no. <laughs> we're good. Yeah, I was wondering. I, Every I photo know. looks fucking intense. Oh God. It's Blade Runner. It's straight up Blade Runner in some of these yeah. places. Yeah, <laughs> and you guys are, you guys, Danny, you guys are still like uh, uh, with Powerhouse. You guys are still uh, predominantly work from home, or is some people going into the studio here and there? No, no, oh. no. We're completely, we've committed to being work from home throughout the rest of the year. Okay. Um, I give Powerhouse a lot of credit for that kind of stuff. So like, it didn't take them long for them to just be like, nope, everyone, go home, done. Yeah. And we're not doing it for a while. They're just, they're just not messing around with that. I wish the rest of the earth was taking it as seriously, but yeah, you know, it is what it Dreamworks is. took it seriously. The day, the day after we moved into our big, nice offices, we were, me, oh, Rad, and Justin, me, Rad, and Justin were like, yes. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And every yeah. Place, they were like, everybody go home. I was like. Because he posted, like, your setup, like, look at the windows. Like, she's so oh, Chris, I had an office for the first time for one week. Oh, for one God. week, I had an office. I was like, I'm going to put a photo right over it. And they're like, go home, and we don't know if you'll ever come back. Okay, bye. Like, <laughs> And we didn't even have the computers on our desk yet. It was no. just like, they moved the furniture in. They oh. were going to bring the computers. We were waiting outside the door. And then they're like, uh, everyone has to go home. I was going to ask you <laughs> the stuff that you left at your desk that you haven't gone back for. Because I have a really great pair of headphones that I mm. are just chilling at Nickelodeon right now. So <laughs> I have a package that Freddie make a pancake batter that I should have taken home. <laughs> what? what you only question. <laughs> Right, why are we making ready make pancakes at the studio? Please explain. <laughs> well, that's the thing, is like I I'll go back there every night because I have access to it. So so every you now and again I'll go there. I'm like, I'm finna steal them pancakes, bro. I'm telling you. I'm <laughs> our, our Can you please post yeah. photos of how you make ready to make pancakes at DreamWorks? <laughs> a lot of questions there. Yeah. I have only questions. <laughs> it was a gift, right, right? Like you got it as a yeah, gift. Yeah. We had a lot of pancakes in one of our episodes, so our sound engineer just gave me a packet of pancake batter for Christmas. I would love the pancakes already made. <laughs> I would know. I hear some work. Man, I'm going to take them. I'm going to have the apple. So oh, funny. So People on the Twitch were like, why the fuck are they talking about pancakes? <laughs> <laughs> if you're just tuning in about pancakes. <laughs> 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 you got a <laughs> It was a basket full of a bunch of stuff. I, that basket, I was like, damn, it's about red. After the work from home, the only thing he was saying was like, man, are my pancakes still there? <laughs> like, that was the first thing that was gone, you know, like when everyone like, got home. I was like, uh, yeah, no, they're still there. It was like the gold watch that they got you. But yeah, no, the pancakes is there. <laughs> that Rolex is gone, but your pancakes yeah. are still there. Yeah. Of course the watch is gone, but yeah, the pancakes is there. He's like, oh, thank you. 
To be fair, though, that was when uh, everyone was starting to go into quarantine and everyone was starting to clear the food shelves in the grocery store. That's so that was a scary time. <laughs> yeah, people were going so crazy. It's like I don't know if this happened to you guys, or it's like, should I be panicking more than I am? Like, I feel like, like I, I was questioning yes. my sanity because I'm like, I feel like the production of toilet paper hasn't changed, but there's just a definitive lack of it in the grocery store. So now I'm concerned. Well, like, the next thing that's cool. Cool. they're like, they're like, you guys aren't coming back till September. But like for some reason, some people were getting told like two weeks. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But like they were like, yeah, there's no way we're coming back till Dude. September. So I like went straight to the grocery store and stocked up like that day, and then the next day everything got cleared out. When I went to normal yeah. grocery stores for toilet paper, I couldn't find any, and then I did the Asian grocery trip at uh, 99 Ranch, and they had a 20 pack of Hello Kitty toilet paper. I'm like. This is and the first I've seen since quarantine yeah. started, and I have Seven Eleven in right downtown now. LA. Got your back. Like I was like, well, Ralph's Whole Foods, and I was like, I wonder. I went into a Seven Eleven. I was like, ah, there it is. There, <laughs> there we go. Good. It was all to sort of take whatever we can get, like in Brackenshire. Yeah. So, so like, yeah. in China. And then, like, he was like, back in January, he was like, hey, man, this shit's gonna go down. I'm gonna get like, tons of toilet paper and get all this stuff. I was like, yeah, man, you can do whatever you want. And I just didn't take it seriously. And then come February, I was like, oh, thank God he took care of all of that. Like, we were like, in the paper, everything was like, like, stocked up. And I was yeah. like, oh, good job that one. I remember yeah, seeing, was- uh, like, TikTok videos of, like, people posting videos on how they were making paper. And I'm like, Oh God, is it getting that bad that people have to make their own paper? It's like, you can shred the paper that you have for recycling and then you can do this. I'm like, I am not fucking doing that. Also, just a question though, in which apocalypse scenario is paper a thing that we need? Right, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. That's the thing we need. It's only in like, a timeline where like, those questions even have to be asked. Otherwise, that would not even be a thought in my mind. At all. I'm trying to picture the Mad Max movie where they're like, oh, we have to make the paper. No, no. I look at my my gauge, my gauge of how insane or how good or bad is I look at my kids and if they're sitting there just playing PlayStation, I go, yo, are y'all hungry? And they're like, no, we good. And they keep playing. I'm like, we good. That was my gauge. I was like, no, that's fair. Yeah, whenever I feel panic, I just call my mom because like West Indians have negative like chill. So I'm like, how is, are things bad? And they're like, no, 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 I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. It was like, if it was, it was bad, then she would actually have any sense of panic towards That's it. That's your barometer right there. <laughs> yeah. Gazy kids. Speaking well, of kids, I'm gonna go, my, my four-year-old, my four-year-old came in here crying because he wants, he, he's, I'm buying him a, a, a toy garbage truck and it has a robot arm on it. He wants to go through, we've been browsing Amazon for him, and he asked his mom if she can do it, and she's watching the show, and so he came in here, tears. Like, I want to just look at garbage trucks, so I'm gonna go do that, um, instead of sitting and talking with friends about cool stuff. And doing having cool those problems right now. <laughs> I, I love the extreme, and this is the thing, like, when people are like, oh, well, you know, they're kids, they don't know. I'm like, this is the most they've ever cared about anything yeah. in about their anything. entire lives. This emotion you know what fixes is it? real and very pure. You know, like, you know what fixes it, and it's legal, NyQuil. <laughs> <laughs> this is now the least they have ever felt about anything. <laughs> I'm not saying I give it to them, I'm talking about for me. Oh, for you? Oh, good. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> wrong with you people? I don't, I don't have to anyway, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know how children work. It's just like your board are just fueled by NyQuil, like fever dreams. Like, <laughs> it's like fever yeah, dreams while you're morning. Uh, this has been really fun, man. Uh, uh, we'll, have to, we'll have to do it again. Uh, and and it's just great chit chatting with you guys and talking about the craft. Red, I'll see you in a couple hours, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Well. Yeah, anyway, let's do it. Longer. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, let's do it, bro. Let's make it happen. I'm, I'm waiting. Call. I'm ready. <laughs> of course you're waiting. You know what I mean? Make it my fault. Whatever, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you, thank you for inviting yeah, me. Ife, get the yeah, boards yeah, down, yeah, bro. Yeah, Why are you sitting there talking so much? Stop talking, Ife. Okay. I'm on board. It's like quietly <laughs> working. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Bye, you guys.